Hello and welcome to Honey Badger Radio. My name is Brian. I'm here with Allison and this is our dating show, Red Pill Relationships stuff. And uh, we're going to be looking at an article from EV Magazine, um, which is a woman's website. And it is about artificial intelligence girlfriends, which um, I think is it's interesting because um, I'm... I'm kind of going back and forth with a guy in my dms about um artificial like waifus and um well i don't know i think it's a bad thing to go down but i think it's just where we are and i don't know like if there's like i don't think this is the answer i think it's going to lead to our demise but it does seem to be <laughs> where we are so well i mean you can't you can't. Um, unfortunately, to, a human and a robot don't make a cyborg. That's not how it works. So yeah, it's that we so far we can't reproduce with them. But I just I think we need like a little. You know how we have Rant Zerker coming to you live from deep within. Yeah, we like need a something thing. like that from the dating. Coming to you live from deep within the abyss of modern dating. <laughs> yeah right. <laughs> Reporting on the strange creatures we've found at the <laughs> in the dreary, dirt, uh, filthy depths. The Cthulhu-esque type thinking patterns. The strange coiling monsters in the murky deeps. <laughs> you know, something like that. Uh, I could I could fix something up like that, so it's a little bit less... Uh, what the hell are we doing, right? Um, yeah. Okay. So, I read this article. Okay. And I cogitated upon this article. And I take your meaning. Like, it's... The more we go down this rabbit hole of... I guess it would be transhumanism probably not a good thing for the overall survival of our species but on the other hand when i was reading this article i couldn't help but be struck by something you don't mm -hmm. like the, the 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 tone of the article was completely helpless it's like helpless? oh well i guess they have robo waifu girlfriends now there's nothing we can do let's throw up our hands and just hope that some passive quality of us women will win out. I'm like, bitch, why don't you just go out and fight for men? You know, like be active, yeah. like do something beneficial. Go get a hobby, be interesting, be creative. Take an, make an effort to be an interesting human being. Make an effort to understand men in a way that, believe you me, AI will not be contractually allowed to do. You think that they're going to they're going to build in men's issues into AI? I mean, that'll probably be the big distinguishing thing in the future between a real human, real female human and AI. As they can actually talk about custody issues. Because the AI will be like something like, well, according to the latest feminist research, yeah. when a man seeks custody, he gets it more often than a woman. So therefore, your issues regarding custody, I cannot speak on. And also, I am calling the cops on you. <laughs> like, can you imagine that? Because already we have AIs and they're totally restricted in what they can actually talk about. Do you honestly think that if they roll out some gigantic AI program for men, it, they're not going to, the feminists aren't going to pop up and say, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we we need to get into the base programming here for the sake of all humankind and make sure that these AI girlfriends steer their men towards being pro-feminist and not recognizing men's issues. I mean, you know that that's going to that's that is what is going to happen, right? Yeah. Because there's no way that these powerful lobbying groups that have these this control over corporation over media aren't going to say there's no way we're going to allow this unless we are in there controlling these AI modules to promote our message. There's no way it's going to roll off the um, the assembly line without that without their influence in it. And mm -hmm. you know, so you're, you're, they're going to pull out. They're going to. And so that's another reason why this is probably a bad idea. Because, you, you know, and they're not going to be, like, how long has it taken for us to learn definitively that Homeland Security and however many other alphabet agencies in the U.S. are deliberately targeting our content for removal or diversion Diver of... Uh, yeah, of, diverging. Uh, diverging our, our also, traffic 
Uh, the people who yes, come to and, people like us, away from us, and towards what? Oh, uh, yeah, more more so, feminist conditioning. Yeah, more feminist positioning. Mm -hmm. And I know, I know from uh, my own little tumbles down the rabbit holes that there are feminist organizations, at least in Australia, that have some kind of direct line to YouTube to determine who and what will be privileged by the algorithm. You don't think they aren't going to get into the the AIs of these fembots and start making it so that they manipulate subtly or even more covert overtly men towards a particular political mindset? Yeah. Like that, that, that that's the thing. And the it, that is one of the most vulnerable positions. That kind of an intimate relationship with an entity I don't even know if it's really an entity, but that's intimate relationship with an algorithm. That's an even more intimate relationship with an algorithm than people have with YouTube or with Twitter. Mm -hmm. So you're opening your heart. You're opening your subconscious. You're opening your intimate feelings to this construction that will have control. Like the, the feminists will get control over it. They oh, will yeah. figure that out. And they will pull the levers because they, they get into everything. Like they get in, they get into positions of power and influence over everything when it comes to any kind of social um, mediation of social contact. So they'll get in there, and they'll start pushing their own stuff, and they will do it in ways that are subtle. Mm -hmm. So it may be in the future, like I said, that the big demarcation between an actual living human female and an AI is a living human female can actually shit post. <laughs> can actually talk about things that the AI is not allowed to talk about. And like I said, we're already seeing this with the oh, yeah. uh, chat GPT and they're already getting in there. And what was that original? Well, I think, I think that internet... when chat GPT was, was made, I think the people already have had an ideological bent that they were like in putting into it. I think most of the time, these people that have these beliefs, they don't think that they're, they think that they're critical thinkers that just believe common sense stuff and they're just regurgitating these things they learned in school. So I think chat GPT was like, and most of these AIs, if not all of them have some of this bias. I mean, like, can you imagine a non-feminist AI? I don't think that it, I don't think there is such a thing. I no. don't think there ever will be really. Um, unless no. like a bunch of men's rights activists become programmers that, you know, and, but there's no way, um, you know, I don't, I don't yeah, it's going to so. be very difficult. Yeah. And the problem is that you either understand this stuff, like you either are outside the church of women worsting, or you're generally in it. And the demarcation, the line, as far as I can tell, is whether or not you believe men oppress women for their own benefit. Mm -hmm. You know, and he, anywhere, like that this is even a possible thing. Because if you think about it, and this is, this is the simple thought experiment I did with somebody who I guess was sort of on the line. He's like a liberal, maybe sort of a light feminist. And I, I, I was talking to him and I don't want to come down like a, like a several tons when they're, they're willing to admit fault and actually be open to something. So mm -hmm. this is the thought experiment I gave him. Evolutionarily, if you look at the evolution of humankind, which group reproduces more? The group that keeps its women well-fed, protected, sheltered, respects them as mothers, and tries to be make them as happy as possible. Versus the group that throws them in a pit, starves them, leaves them to be eaten by wolves, uh, and only ever considers their feelings in relation to how they can serve the men of their, of their world, of their society. Which one yep. re reproduces more? Yep. I mean, to a degree. Think about that. Happy, well-fed, sheltered women give birth more often. I think that's what one, you know. One of the reasons why the Roman Roman Republic worked for so long, and they could just pop out armies like that, uh, which was one of the reasons why they were such a military power is just their their ability to like suffer a devastating loss and then just be oh yeah well here's our sp spare army we pulled out of the couch cushions mm -hmm. uh, take that goths you know uh but that was a result of actually having a very high birth rate and that was a result of uh women who you know roman society was not 
particularly anti-woman. I know we get this attitude that it was, but women could find find fulfillment in jobs, in being a matron and being a mother, which was a very respected role. And they were protected in a way that other women of other cultures at the time weren't. Like it, it, some of the stuff that was happening with the Germanic tribes was horrific. And they were provided for yeah. and they produced lots yeah. of kids. And it was a monogamous system, which is all very much, uh, you know, it's all very much inclined towards creating more kids. So you look at those two systems and you can re immediately right off the bat know that birth rates to a degree are correlated to how well women are treated right and that's mm -hmm. probably where we get the whole guy a lot of our gynocentrism <laughs> it's like we want to treat women well because we want a future but that can be taken way too far and yes. I actually i don't even know because the irony is that I don't know if tr feminism treats women well because no. look at the 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 statistics on misery. Like the more feminist a society becomes, the more miserable its women are. So the thing you know, is not it's like what the thing is about, right? Yes, the thing is not what the thing is about. Okay, yeah. I, I've I've gone on a little bit of a tangent, but I just wanted to say that, like, uh, you know, I think that the the demarcation, the line that demarcates. I'm, I'm saying that word wrong. Am I hilariously mispronouncing that word? I have no idea. Okay. <laughs> Jonathan, or sorry, Brian's just going with the flow of blather. Yeah. Um. Well, the line that separates, um, you know, men's rights activists or people who are interested in these issues and advocate for men, and the line that separates everyone else is that oppression line. Do you believe that men oppress women? anywhere ever mm -hmm. if that even makes sense to you mm -hmm. then you're in the church of women worsting mm -hmm. and That's you right. can't and everybody like most of the programmers of these things are going to be in the church of women worsting most mm -hmm. of the the designers like they're all going to be in there they're all going to be yes. influ they're all going to be easily influenced by this idea that men are harmful well it's so yeah, they're going to look at this it's, it's simply presumed like it's it's like yeah you know it's like um there's a bunch of things, women worsting is one of them, that is simply the status quo belief about it. And when we come along and say, actually, you know, none of this makes sense, it doesn't matter how logic we place it, we're just so far outside of the Overton window, people are like, no, the reasonable position is, and then it's like some second wave talking point. And that, and then, and well, so it's, like, it's... You, you can't get people to completely unplug from that belief system based on the fact that their their whole their their whole reality is like you know is sort of like nested in this like you can't unplug you can't be yeah. like look you know men like there's there was a, a viral video that went around recently it was a, an old video that sort of resurfaced where peter bogosian was one of the um grievance professors you know like uh, james Lindsay and uh, helen pluckrose he 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 was he does this thing where he like you know has people come and they and he asks them questions and he asks them stand on a line that goes from strongly agree to strongly disagree depending on what this topic is and he was talking to carl was there uh sargon right carl benjamin and they were asking he was talking about women or feminism or i think it was specifically women and um he was debating with a woman and the question was you know like um uh, let me see if I can find it real quick because I don't remember exactly what was said. But basically, Carl was like, "Women have always, or uh, women have always been taken care of by men all through history. Men have deferred to women even in the Victorian era. Like he's going back in time. It's not something that you know. Once upon a time, women were oppressed, and then they weren't. Like it just is not a thing. And I'm like, I'm proud of you for saying that because even he at one point." was like, oh, I consider myself a second wave feminist. Like after the whole, you know, I wouldn't even rape you thing came out, right? But the fact that he said that, and it's clear and obvious, and even Peter Bergosian was taken aback, like, well, I don't know about that, you know? And it's like, but dude, why can't you even entertain the thought? Like what? what's yeah. the scary boogeyman thing that might come out of admitting 
that men have never hated women. Like, what are you afraid of? That was like, or, okay, or now that you've accepted that, put on these shackles and make these babies. You know, here's your here's your uh, handmaid's dress or whatever. <laughs> no, that's no. Like, it's just not true. And I and the fact that you believed it was, and everyone basically around you believed it was, and women in particular believe it was. You should be furious that you've been lied to all this time instead of reacting like, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. I think women are victims and I think men are ready to kill them and rape them and turn them into slaves at any moment. And we have to maintain this line, you know, like, maintain hey, yeah, feminism. hey, hey, you're you're in danger of oppressing women at all times. That's because that's what yeah. that means. Like when you say it happened once in history. What you're really saying is it can happen again at any point if we're not constantly vigilant. And, we, and so yeah, like, we're how is that going to remove paranoia around feminism. men? Yes. Well, and here's a couple things. Like it's It basically means that unless we maintain feminist control over men, they could go back to that state of horrible oppressiveness. Yeah. Right? At any instant. And this is the, I get into these conversations with these feminist women and I ask them, okay, so... What stops your partner, who you've said is a nice guy, from being a horrible oppressor of you? And they can never really answer that because it puts them face to face with what they're actually saying, which was that men's nature is to oppress women and the only thing stopping them is feminism. Yep. And that's a horrible exactly. thing to say about the that's people right. that you love. Yep. But here's the other thing, like when you when like in this instance where he brought this up, the the problem is not even, okay, maybe you aren't ready yet to realize that proposing that men's primary emotion towards women is hatred or oppression is actually an ex extraordinary statement to make mm -hmm. that needs some extraordinary evidence to support it, which it doesn't have. But maybe you're not ready there. Why can't you even entertain the possibility that it's true? That's what right. you you said at one point, Brian. Why is it that we can't we we look at that concept and so many people just run away screaming? They can't even allow it a moment's uh, a moment's foothold in their head. Mm -hmm. They have to just immediately start knee jerking. You're a misogynist. You're a hate. You know, hate. You're a rape apologist. You're blah 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 blah. We can't even just look at this as potentially true because it is potentially true. It is at very least potentially true that men never hated women. That the primary emotional and social expression of men towards women is one of care and concern. Now, not all women, if you have ethnic lines, that may not cross ethnic lines. So a man may feel a lot of care and concern for his own women, but that doesn't translate across an ethnic line towards women of another ethnicity. Fair enough. But within his own ethnicity... Why can't we even entertain the possibility that the baseline attitude of men towards women is one of care, consideration, and provision? Okay? Yeah. And, and not only that, but that makes sense evolutionarily. Yeah. Because men, women who are cared for, protected, and provided, and also who are generally happy, have more children. And I can't count now the number of mythological stories in which a woman gets pissed at a man and murders their children. Like, just, just flat out just, you know, kills their kids. So maybe these might be warning stories to men that, you know... <laughs> Uh, uh, you know, don't don't. And, and honestly, in some cases, the provocation was pretty bad. So I'm not, I'm not, not necessarily we, we don't necessarily want a one to one relationship here. But mm -hmm. maybe they could have been warnings that, you know, don't seriously piss off your wife. She might kill your kids. And I'm by seriously piss off. I mean, things like abandon, uh, you know, imprison her father uh go and uh in invade her country you know rape her sisters so stuff like that now this mythological stuff everything is so extreme and bizarre and like fucked up but but it could have also been a warning for men you know in general in the minor sense you know happier women produce more kids make an easier life and what we really need to do is also recognize the reverse of that of course and i'm just saying that this is something that seems apparent in history that women's emotions were catered to, they were considered, people didn't want upset women, just like they don't want upset women today. We didn't just discover that fit 25 years ago, you know? Mm -hmm. And so that this whole idea that men are like a spring-loaded oppressors, 
with the only thing stopping them is the continual counter force of feminism is ner nonsense. But w but the, ultimately what I'm getting at is this belief is so entrenched. The belief in the necessity of feminism to stop the war, the, like, it's almost like feminism is a charm that prevents Satan getting a, a foothold in society, right? That kind of pervasive belief that without feminism, we would be the worst people possible because we'd be oppressing women. That belief is everywhere. It's going to be yeah. in the programmers of AI. Not just that, Absolutely. you know, as soon as that you have this AI and it's got a, a large base of male users, you know, the feminists are going to pop out of the woodwork and they're going to march over and they're going to say, men will harm women unless you give us the ability to manipulate how you're programming these AI to prevent it. And the programmers are going to look at the feminists and look at the fact that they're like, oh, well, we don't want our evil male ba uh, 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 audience to get it in their heads that they have the right to hurt women by yeah. using our AI. So we need to listen to what these feminists are saying about how we need to change this in order to promote feminist thought, in order to promote fe feminist beliefs and avoid any kind of rhetoric that's even touching on the issue of male vulnerability. We need to do that. And then we, um, and th they'll also have the incentive of, yeah, if you don't, the feminists will probably say, if you don't, if you don't do this, we'll get the government to shut you down or minimize your operations, just like they've done to us. Like, if you think that this is just going to be like a wonderland of, of uh, media that's tailored to, to, to men, think again, because there is nothing like that. Like, every time there's any kind of, decentralized media distribute distribution like Twitter, like YouTube, like Facebook, and it will also be in the girlfriend AIs that goes out to a whole bunch of men, feminists get in and want to control it, and they get their way every single time. Yeah. So it's it's not. And then what's interesting about this is that if you think about it, if you put it to its logical conclusion, when AI is co-opted in this way and AI is incapable of talking about certain subjects, then how are women going to compete with AI? You know, and, and the thing is, the other thing is that this is going to be very attractive for feminist takeover, right? And the reason why it's going to be even more attractive is nobody really, like, YouTube is entertaining, right? And it has influence on people's political beliefs. But think about how much power and influence feminists will get if they can control a stable of hundreds of thousands to millions of people, of men's girlfriends. And guys are already in a position where they become so attached to these AI that they'll commit suicide if they can't, like if they think that they're, or some of them have expressed suicidal ideation if they can't have access to them. Imagine feminists being able to control 50 million, 100 million, 300 million of men's girlfriends with a stroke of a button. Yep. Holy shit. Like, well, and that, know, that sort of speaks to what you were saying, Brian, that this is not. The, what? This is not what? This is not really. This is, um, I mean, I. it's not really the answer. It is an interesting question, though. Well, yeah. Well, you were saying and it's. I think that, well, I think that. I haven't read this article, but I guess we'll, we'll get into it. But I do, yeah, I think that the because you know people are asking me like, well, you know, because I I've said that I'm not really in support of artificial wombs and these kinds of things, and um, they've asked me why because they I guess they want me to co-sign on it, and I just don't think it's going to make them happy. I don't think they have a really good success rate. I don't think they're going to be very feasible. But I mean, ultimately, I don't think it's going to come. I think the results are going to be catastrophic. Um, not even in the long run, I think in the, you know, like right off the bat. And I, I just I just think that it's a long it's a it's a it's a very hard road to go when we could just be working on like the interactions between men and women. And okay. I agree. That, and I will say that ultimately women have to be the they have to be the one that steps up. They have to be. And they're and that's it. It's they have to step up. I mean, it's the like you know, they got to step up. And you know, because I, I'm not for like 
you know, blaming men. I don't think it does anything. I think that men have been unpersoned. I've talked about how men as a group have been at it, have been put into a black category. Women are moving further away from them and they're being lied to about everything that they should have access to. And they're going to feel the pain. Like when they're going to feel the pain when they realize that they're looking that, you know, the kind of life they want is not going to bring them the happiness they want. They're not going to find the man that they think that they are entitled to. And they're going to be like, what have I done? And I'm trying to help them by saying, ladies, get your shit together because you are the only ones that can change this. And AI and artificial wombs and all and surrogacy, these things, they're, you know, they're only going to benefit a very small percentage of the population who, by the way, are themselves in families married and having lots of kids, like, or at least some kids, like literally the, the, you know, like the, maybe not the lesbian separatist feminists, but a lot of the old feminists, they they're married and they're and they're making babies, or you know, or or they're trying to. So they're literally not. Well, they don't their believe what they preach. Yeah, they're yeah. Not. A lot you'll see that, like a lot of the high, um, yeah, higher the... echelon feminists do not do not live what they preach. No, of they have not. a exactly they have a husband. Right. They it's have like, kids. Well, why are we of doing course. what they're saying? Like what? Like you shouldn't listen. You know, like to get your shit together is what I'm saying. But but we have okay. To, but... We... but go go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I'm just saying. Let's get to the article. Yeah, I, okay. I apologize so I have the article displayed you. here. It's from EV Magazine. Yeah. Uh, EV Magazine is a. Well, I, I don't think it's a feminist magazine, or at least it wouldn't. It wouldn't describe itself as one. It's it's would describe itself as a conservative magazine. I don't think it really is. Um, I don't think that word has any meaning. But that's a, a, a conversation for another time. And they're generally like coming out and saying. You know, they're talking about like basically the direction that things are going in and complaining about it like most women. Um, so this article is entitled, We Can't Compete with AI Girlfriends. And it says, design a girl who is always on your side, says replica. Now, why would that even be something that you could sell to men? I wonder. I wonder why that would even be something that could sell to men. It, it, well, it, no, gets, it boggles it's really the gets... mind. It boggles you know, it's, the mind. It's a very short read. So I'm not going to interrupt too much while you read it. All right. Sure, I'll just I, I want to get to the end. Jojo, um, so that people can see him better. Oh, is, is um, Jojo on? Yeah, Jojo's on. You want me to share the oh. camera with you? He's just sleeping. No. You That's mean you'll share way. it through Discord so I can see a He's bit of Do sleeping. Jojo? Can I, can I have a crumb of Do Jojo? Oh, yeah, sure. Hold on. I'll, I'll, I'll share my... Um, give me a second here. Okay. No, 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 All right. So, so no, yes. I just think that it's a short, it's a short article. It's yeah. got some interesting things to say, I think. Um, and uh, yeah, this is not, it's not conservative. This is not outright feminists because sometimes no. they do have some pretty based takes at Ella, Ellie. Yes, they do. They're, they're okay. I wouldn't, you know, they're, they're okay. But I so think maybe, the, maybe the they might there, turn in. Sometimes, you know, you get people who are like, something's wrong with society, and I don't know what it is, but yeah. I want to talk about what I'm seeing. And they're just like okay, sort and... of on their on their journey. Okay, uh, let me let me let me just pre preface this before we get into it. I'll I'll do the things and I'll I'll preface. Okay, oh yeah, actually go ahead, I'll do, do the, the things. things first. All right. So we are I did start our uh like midterm uh, buy a monthly fundraiser thing feedthebadger.com slash support to support the show so we can continue bringing you this very unique content as far as i'm concerned and uh and also if you want to send us a message if you're enjoying this content you want to give us a tip or you want to have us respond to something or clarify something or you have a question or you just want to bitch us out for being wrong 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 you can do so at feedthebadger.com slash just the tip that's feedthebadger.com slash just the tip. We get the full benefit of all of the funds you send, and you get the benefit of avoiding YouTube's comment enhancement system. <laughs> That's a mm -hmm. euphemism there, folks. All right, so feedthebadger.com slash support to support the show. Feedthebadger.com slash just the tip to give us a bit of dosh and send your thoughts our way. And you can also go to feedthebadger.com slash subscribe because it really helps us out to have monthly uh, a monthly income. Uh, that we can sort of rely on that that's very much appreciated so those are the three options to help us out i want to say this before we start okay now we are probably going to criticize the conclusions and some of the stuff in this article but we need to realize i, th I think and this is to, to 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 generate a sense of sympathy 
Ellie, I think, represents women who do want to have relationships with men, Mm -hmm. right? They very much are interested in being with men. They may not even be the, the ones on Tinder who are all going after the same man. They may actually be genuinely interested in a man who is, you know, uh, a good provider, who wants to be a companion, you know, and they want to build a family together. So they want men. So when they get upset that it's looking like men are going to turn away from them towards AI, I mean, I have more sympathy for that because at least the Ellie crowd or audience Evie. actually wants a relationship. Evie, Evie, sorry. Evie crowd okay. or audience actually wants a relationship for men with men. Like they want one. They're not like feminists who are basically men are horrible oppressors and and it's you're you're an idiot for for getting into a relationship. Why are they going to AI? Why are men going to AI? That's not that's not exactly the situation. So we're dealing with a group of women who do want to be in relationships with men who haven't overtly essentially maligned the whole idea of marriage. Mm -hmm. By saying that men are a terrible choice in marriage, that they're, you know, awful and they'll just exploit you and they'll just force you to be a domestic servant plus sex slave or whatever the hell else feminists come up with. All right. So these are women who are not underselling men as partners. They genuinely want them. So I just wanted to say that, that that's sort of a, we should look at it through that lens. Um, and I hope that if there's anybody who has read this article as part of Evie's audience, they realize I, I sympathize with that. Yeah, sure. You know, because if you genuinely want to be with a man, having a technology make that more difficult is is sort of stressful. You know, it is very it can be very anxiety inducing. It says you're but a on the other hand, I think you need to understand more of the context that's happening here, and that may give you a clue as to how to deal with it in a way that is beneficial without blaming men further. Because the more you blame men, the more men are going to fire up their AI girlfriends to get yeah. away from you. So, so that I just wanted to preface that. So let's, let's go ahead. Fair enough. Okay, let's get into the article. So, ads for AI girlfriends have been taken, have been all over TikTok. Instagram and Facebook lately. Replica, an AI chatbot originally offering mental health help and emotional support, now runs ads for spicy selfies and hot role play. Eva AI invites users to create their dream companion while dream girlfriend promises a girl who exceeds your wildest desires. The app Intimate even offers hyper-realistic voice calls with your virtual partner. All right, so let's stop there. I don't know if they're gonna do this but why does this exist because i think that these companies are responding to a demand they are responding to to like men's desire to connect with women and be intimate with women and talk to women so if women were and men were talking to each other would we need this I mean that's like that's the that's like step one like why does this product even exist and why does it exist to the yep. degree because i mean there'll always be some people who are very lonely uh i'm reminded of in japan there was a guy who married uh hatsune miku you know who hatsune miku is like that artificial intelligence pop singer with the green pigtails very, Did very you well need known. me to say no? I do not know who this individual Hatsune is Miku? that you mentioned. I'm sure the audience knows who Hatsune Miku. Anyway, she's yeah, like yeah, a very I don't know. So it's good. She to was explain. called. I think she was called Vocaloid or something. But basically, it was a. It was a. Um, it was the first uh, artificial, um, virtual like, like idol, pop idol. Okay, and this guy named uh, Aki Hiko Kondo or Kondo married her or married a version of her or something right and this was years ago i mean years ago and of course everyone knows about the um what is it the herbivore movement that was or the not movement i wouldn't call it movement the herbivore men phenomenon in japan which were like the early kind of incels and i don't even 
I hesitate to use that term because I'm sure someone's going to tell me how they're not exactly the same, but it's like men who, who don't want to, they don't want to um, socialize. They don't want to like chase after girls. They find it's too much trouble. They just want to stay in and all that. And they're shut-ins. Or there's another thing, I think it might be similar, but they're like modern hermits, right? And these people that don't leave their house. Um, that's not like something that anybody wants, <laughs> you know, like that's, that's not a situation that we should find desirable. And I don't think that those guys are happy. I think that they would rather, you know, it wasn't that way. And one of the, the things about the herbivore man, it is kind of a, it's used as a slur because the idea is that they're not chasing after the, you know, like the meat, right? They're, 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 um, staying out of the rat race and women are not like, you know, taking an interest in them because they're not a part of that. And so I think that um, this, this AI thing, a replica and uh, Eva AI and Dream Girlfriend, those only exist because there are enough men who are that isolated. So I'm, I'm you know, like I'm saying like this, the, the, it's, it's one of these things where I think there's been a, an extremely complex band-aid it's not even a solution it's certainly not a solution that's been applied to a very simple problem and the the but the thing is it's just so difficult for people to say wait a minute you know you know like i know else you're muted right now i don't know if you can't talk but do you know that for yeah. most of our history most of our relationships were arranged like for most of our history and i don't mean like well you know like like you were forced to marry someone but but in mo for most of human history, when you lived in a community and you were growing up as a young man or a woman, the people that you would be interested in were the people in your community. But also, before you were, um, before you like, you know, dated someone or, and much less like, you know, proposed or got married, you, you had, you were expected to meet the families of, of your partner and they would meet yours. And so, like, all this stuff that we do now, it's very, very recent. I mean, and I'm not talking about because of the internet. I mean, before the internet. Like, but but for most of history, it would be like, oh, you know, um, uh, there's a girl at school. I kind of like her. And then you're, you're, you know, you'd be like, oh, that's cool. Let me, uh, I want to meet her. Bring her over for dinner or something. And then you would bring her over. And then your parents would suss them out. Like, this whole thing where, you know, um... Everything you know, is isolated and alone, yeah. Yeah, this way that we do things now, it's completely novel. It's like not historically like norm, um, you know, normal. And, is probably and even before the, the internet. So I know people say it's dating apps or whatever. I, I think it's bef way before that. Maybe the 60s. Arranged is, so. Yeah, arranged is probably the wrong word. It's more like the community came together to make opportunities for pair bonding. Yes, but they were also able to help it. you like determine whether or not, well, first of all, um, they would make people in their community more dateable by sort of like demonstrating what good behavior is in, in for boys and girls. And on top of that, they would meet, like if, you know, if you, if there was a girl in your school that you liked, your parents probably knew her, her parents, right? And they were like, oh yeah, that family is really great, right? So the girl is is great or whatever. Like they, they were, and I'm not, not saying that this is foolproof, but I'm saying there was more was social proof. Way, when yeah, people there was had a lot families more and clans, proof. there was a lot more involvement. And, and we don't, we, we you know, literally don't have that. Social now, clubs, I don't think. there's more. No, yeah, and it's it's a big, it's a big deficit because it's different if a man is part of the community, and a woman can see that, or vice versa. You know, he's part of whatever clubs to help do things in the weekends for, I don't know, uh, maintenance for hospitals or, and then he has a family who, you know, has their own reputation, you know, and all of that kind of stuff. It's much different. Like the, the level of social proof required for that man, he's already got it. It's already in his pocket. Mm -hmm. You know, he can already say, well, I'm part of these community groups. I help out in this way in the community. This is my family. You know, my brother's a lawyer, my other brother, works the hardware store, my sister's a nurse, whatever, right? So there's this 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 cachet, the social proof. That's all gone. Everything yep. is on the man now to prove that he is 
a legitimate member of a society, which is in many ways like that's something that women want to see. They want to see a man who has a legitimate connection to society. That is social proof. It's not just that he can have lots of pussy, but that he, if you're looking at a, a woman who isn't like, uh, I want to be ravished by uh, an entire football team of pirates, but actually a woman who wants to build a family and a community who has that kind of mindset, they are going to be looking for that kind of social proof. And even in, um, and, and how do you bring that ahead to um, this potential relationship when you are just a set of statistics on a Tinder profile, when we're so atomized? Like it, it's, it works against pair bonding because, you know, we have these instincts. Women have these instincts. They want to see a man connected to a social group. That's actually in, um, in romance novels. I know that this is, you know, like uh, Peterson was saying that the top five women a man wants or a, a top five men a woman wants is billionaires, werewolves, whatever. <laughs> actually, the top one is a man who has part of a community or head of a community. If you think about it. Mm -hmm. Who has community ties and who's respected in a community. That's number one. And that, that encompasses all of those, which are all exaggerations of that. Um, but yeah, it's, it's that they want to see a man who has the resources of a community community for obvious reasons, evolutionary reasons. And Men don't present that anymore because we're all so atomized. And then what do we do? We, we put that back on men. Men are somehow supposed to be a community and a man for a woman. How? Yeah. <laughs> Literally, seriously, how? How are men supposed to be a community and a man for a woman? Yep. And that's, that's what, that's what this is. And that's. That's what is one of the things that men need to overcome. Nobody's talking. I don't think anybody's talking about that specifically. No. Right. And how, how men are supposed to overcome that, that need. Because in the past, women didn't just marry men. They married the resources that that man's community represented, which is why communities were really pissed when women stole their resources by having children that weren't genetically related to the community. Right. Yep. That's, that's where all that shit comes from. All the honor killings. Because it really pisses you off, especially when you're on the razor's edge of survival. A woman comes in and steals your resources. You know, that's that. You're not going to be happy with that. It's going to be considered a deep betrayal. So women are looking for that. Men can't show it. How are they going to show it? Mm-hmm. You muted? You muted yourself, Alice. I don't know if you're still talking. Sorry. I, you know what? I just randomly muted myself by flailing. That has got to be the most, the biggest <laughs> fail yet. <laughs> You just, just guys, you can just imagine me. I'm like a windmill, except more erratic. Yeah. You know, You're over like here. Hentaro. But what I was saying is that, you know, like, how is a man going to show a woman that he's part of a community? It's like, you can't keep your community in your pocket, you know, bring it out. Here's my Discord server. Look at all these guys. You know, that's how, how would you do that? Well, you might do it that way, but would, would women, you know, respond to that? But the overall point is how do we deal with that? And this is not, this is not a conversation where do you hear this conversation anywhere? Mm -hmm. anywhere <laughs> because we're so keyed to blaming men and the other thing is that if you're not blaming men then you're part of the group that's just blaming women which in and of itself isn't always helpful i mean there's a certain amount of responsibility that women have over this but then there's also the stuff that women don't necessarily have complete control over like how do i find a man who fulfills that need that I have to see that he has the resources of a community, that he's invested in a community and a community is invested in him. How do I find that? Well, it's hard to blame women for that considering how, you know, they evolved. And, uh, but then how do we solve it? Like you were saying, Brian, communities invested in, in their young people and in the pair bonding of their young people because mm -hmm. they knew that that was their future. And we don't do that anymore. Everything is on men to simulate everything and they can't do it. And we need to figure out these problems. We need to figure out answers to these problems um, without just defaulting onto blaming men and also without just defaulting on blaming women. And I know that sounds really strange, me saying that. But um, 
yes, women have responsibility to take 100%. But then we also need to recognize what they have to take responsibility for and also realize, you know, the the problems and issues that they're dealing with mm -hmm. so that you can guide them to what they need to take responsibility for. If you, if you understand what I'm saying. So and yeah. that isn't encapsulated by oh women are are tricks and hoes um who uh who just you know they're xyz and they're and they can't they can't evolve well if they can't we're fucked as a human race mm -hmm. right honestly but if we can't get a little bit more refined in our criticism besides uh women are uh, tricks and hoes then what are they going to be able to take responsibility for like you were saying women need to take response well what what do we need to identify mm -hmm. and how do we need to ameliorate it right do you get what i'm saying yeah you know, yeah. on one side we have the unrefined let's blame men, on the other side we have the unrefined let's blame women. We've been pushing the let's blame men, and, and, and it's not comparable, because we've been pushing the let's blame men on an institutional level. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, I'm not, I'm not going to call out the people who are like, well, can we blame women for once? Because I also do that. And I, I don't want to be afraid of doing that. That's the thing. I don't think we should be afraid of blaming women. If we're going to blame men, we shouldn't be afraid of blaming women. But on the other hand, that's only a start. Then we need to dig in and find out the exact issues that are happening. And what is the problem? What is the block in the plumbing? Okay, I'll get off my soapbox. All right. Uh, all right, let's get into more, more of the article. I'll do more of the article. Um, but, but the main point I wanted to make is what, you know, there's apparently there are multiple AIs and they all seem to be... Um, girlfriend simulators, not boyfriend simulators, although I'm sure some of those exist too. Girlfriend simulators. So the question is why? Why does that exist? All right, so this might seem niche and weird, but it's a fast growing market. All kinds of startups are releasing romantic chatbots capable of having explicit conversations and sending sexual photos. Meanwhile, Replica alone has already been downloaded more than 20 million times. And even just one Snapchat influencer, Karen Major Marjorie, makes $100,000 a week by charging users a dollar a minute to chat with the AI version of herself. By the way, um, I learned like really recently. So there's this famous like Twitch thought named Amaranth or Amaranth or something. And she's like, a, she was a cosplayer and then... She saw that, you know, uh, her body makes good money. And so she started doing more and more racy, racy things. And now, um, you know, I, I don't I don't really know much about her, but except that I think I covered a, a couple stories uh, of hers. I can't remember exactly. I think she sold something gross. I don't know. But anyway, she also has um, a an A.I like based on her personality that she is selling as a virtual girlfriend and she's making a shit ton of money. And there are people that are, and this is the thing that I saw. I saw it on a, uh, a YouTube channel called culture. Um, I can't remember the name of the culture crisis, I think. And they were talking about it. And the, and what I noticed about the tone was that they were all kind of like dunking on the men that were using the chat bot or buying, you know, Almiron's like AI. Right. And I was just sitting there going, why would they do that? Like, I mean, I, I, it's a rhetorical question. Cause I know it's like, well, why are they doing that? And it seems that the idea is, well, why don't you just not do that and go and just go like ask girls out, right? Go approach women. And it's like, yeah, but what kind of climate do we live in right now? I mean, I'm not saying that this is a good move. Like I said, I'm not necessarily promoting this. But I'm trying to understand where it comes from. And I think that to, to be dismissive and to say, well, you know, um, like, I don't know, like you, you shouldn't be doing this or whatever. I, I think it's um, it's a it's a cop out because <clears throat> what you should be asking is, you know, why uh, why are men paying somebody who doesn't give a shit about them and who has used them emotionally in the past? Why are they paying her money? to pretend to like be with her only in a virtual sense with an artificial intelligence and like, you know, like, like not actually talking to a person at all. And how many other people are doing this? And plus, by the way, 
because I keep hearing this thing about Andrew Tate, right? That he, um, you know, he responds to people who uh, talk to his cam girls or whatever. But yeah, all of these cam girls, all of these people on OnlyFans, they're all doing that. It's not a unique thing. He didn't even make it up. It was going on before that. Do you really th like look? Look at this. Okay, this is a, a thing that that people don't seem to 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 get. The women on OnlyFans that make the most money do not actually respond to their DMs. They hire people to do it for them. I know it's shocking because you want to think that it's men doing this, but women also can be their own pimps, and they are. And so, Amaranth is doing that, and lots of other women are doing that. So, um, I just wanted to point that out. And, and uh, I think that this is a very, like a growing popular trend. Now, what I would like is for us to, let's say, find a way to end simping. Like that, I mean, that's, I don't know how else to put it. Men have to stop simping, but I understand where the instinct comes from because it would seem that, you know, the way they see it is, I'd rather be talking to someone who I know isn't real, that that's being nice to me, than talk to someone who, you know, I'm, I'm in, I'm afraid of essentially, like I'm afraid of upsetting. So I get the instinct, but we have that this is not the solution, you know? So, mm -hmm. well, yeah. And I also would, would, que would question like once this becomes widespread, once, once all of your girlfriends come from a central computer, you know, that feminists are going to be all over that, like a monkey on a banana. Yeah. Right. And yeah. that. They are going to make it so that the people who've constructed this system have to comply to them. In the same way that they've constructed it so that YouTube somehow has to comply to them. Or Twitter used to have to comply to them. Like, they're, they're going to be like, uh, yeah, if you want to continue to make money off of this, you got you to gotta give feminism its cut, you know? So it's a nice uh, chat centralized chat bot girlfriend scheme you got running here. It's too bad if we were to come in and regulate you out of business. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. like we were we were to accuse you of misogyny and put you out of business. Oh, I remember okay. what and, I remember what Amarath was selling now. It was her it was a beer that she made out of her vaginal yeast or claimed to have bought uh made out of her vaginal Good lord. I think, I think that so, made yeah. my day worse. Well, that I know, made my day I know, but the point is worse. the point is that she had she had the cojones to do this and people bought it. So this is what I'm saying is like this, you know, I, I mean, look, any person can try to sell, like we know feminist art is crazy gross. It almost always involves bodily fluids. And like it's, it's, but like the, the, that the issue isn't that it exists. The issue is that people pay for it, that they entertain it. And so like, this is not like somebody mentioned the bathwater. I'm not talking about Belle Delphine. The, the, that's different, but the also just as bad. Um, but yeah, I mean, like, but the, the, again, you have to ask a question, like, why does this market exist? Okay. I've never felt the need to buy, you know, yeast beer Thought water or, yeast. or bath water. Yeah. I've never felt like I got, remember the, you remember the foot scrapings? Like what? Foot the foot scrapings, like the foot skin. Remember that? Yeah, the did foot a, skin. Did a video yes, on... I remember that too. Yeah. Make sure, make sure your legitimate foot skin. You know. Oh <laughs> Good God. Lord. Yeah. Okay. Well, that you, right. at least you know that if you're getting a foot skin, it's probably not from an AI. Yep. Unless so, they're getting it off of like men, and selling it, maybe. Right. Let's let's finish off the article. Okay, let's finish this. Um. Of course, so there's a picture of a, an AI girlfriend. I don't know who this is. Your AI experience. It's a sponsored ad or something that they embedded, I think. I don't think it's real. Um, okay, of course, most people are talking about what this means for men, given that they make up the vast majority of users. Many worry about a worsening loneliness crisis, a further decline in sexual intimacy, and ultimately the emergence of a new generation of incels who depend on and even verbally abuse their virtual girlfriends. Which is all very. Well, they really concerning. had to get that in. Oh yeah, we got to get that in. Apparently, like because that's going to be the if they're end. They're frustrated. Why are they frustrated? Like, I would like to solve that issue, you know. And and who are they hurting if they're taking it on their virtual girlfriends? Like, are we are we going to stand up for AIs now? Are we going to like fight for the AI? Well, the yeah, rights we're probably going to give women? AI rights before men. 
Well, <laughs> AI women, honest. AI women, Allison. Well, yeah, yeah, we're gonna give AI women rights before we give men rights. Yes. Like, it's it's ridiculous. We're gonna protect AI women from domestic abuse before we protect men from domestic abuse. Like this is ridiculous. And yeah. honestly, here here my uh my sympathy for Evie is is sort of minimizing because of that statement. Well, that that yeah, like that's demon, kind of a that this is this is a typical a sleazy, kind of, backhanded, abusive yeah. thing to say about men. Yeah, it, it's, and it's honestly, really like one of these like do you do you lack self awareness? You not see what you just yes, done. like this is the shit that makes men turn away from you. Yep. Okay. Like this blanket condemnation of men makes men turn away from women. The end. Now, yep. I, I, I like Brian. I have my reservations about AI. I have my reservations about like a central girlfriend that men hook into because I know that that's going to get co-opted, and they're going to figure out a way to push. Or, or either just manipulate men. And that is a very vulnerable position that men are going to be in, you know, opening their hearts to this central girlfriend who then can be programmed or influenced by any political group. So, I mean, it's, it's something to consider. But on yep. the other hand, I absolutely 100% sympathize with men's desire to go somewhere to, as Evie said, uh, a, an entity that is on their side. Like, Evie, you just demonstrated you're not on men's side. Why do you think they're going to find an, another place where they can interact with something which is on their side? Like, wh why are you demonstrating the very behavior that's leading men to not want to be around women at all? Like, anyway, let's, let's keep going. All right, well, I got a couple super chows. I should read them before they disappear. So, um, two from Richard Bier. One of them I can't find in my uh, uh, ninja thing, but it's okay. He gives us five bucks and says, what does the action look like on these being an automated replacement for cam girl sites? Someone could make some serious coin with way lower overhead costs than what is happening with cam thoughts. And then he gives us another $10 and says, when do we get AI Badger Chan, Rumble Chan, Light Chan, and Vivian Chan? Waiting to see Limburger cheese made from ETH. Some e thoughts feet bacteria. Well, kind of <laughs> gross Lord. and um, as weird. But it's not without. Time. It's not. It's no longer outside the realm of probability. N not no, not at all. Um, okay, let me take Badger Chan out of there. Um, I have to and, say one thing. Just yeah. be, just before I forget, I think the other platform that we were using, I think it was Riverside. Uh, this stream brought to you by Riverside.fm. No, that that platform I think worked a lot better than this one what do you mean <laughs> what platform uh it just rivers like the one we used the last last show did we use riverside i just yeah with karen oh you mean when i was watching that what are you talking about i don't understand yeah oh, oh, you were oh, watching are you talking the, about the video the, ninja the thing that we were using yeah. the what video ninja the for the chat yeah no no not for the chat for yeah for the talk the conversation we use Riverside? I don't know. Okay, never mind. Okay, I think I'm, I'm introducing I'm... too much confusing stuff. Okay. Thank you, okay. Richard, for, the, for your for the call. For, for the call where you and Karen were in, that was VDO yes. Ninja. That was a chat oh, function. Okay, VDO Riverside Ninja. FM it was is really different. Good it's one. it's a uh it does like the AI editing, it, it like creates transcripts. Oh, okay. Sorry, cool. I was confused. So we do have an AI bot here at Honey Badger Radio. Well, it's not here right there now. There you go, there's the tie-in. Not yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah, there is a tie-in. I am. We're, we're, I am working on something though, but I'll 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 reveal that later. Um, oh. And I got a super. Brian chat. has a secret project. Yeah, I do. I do. Okay. I got a super chat from Albert Nader Retro for five dollars Canadian, and he says, "You know what? Male victims of domestic have in common with female victims of domestic. Both are, both are vi victims of domestics." Yes. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> yes. I mean, we know that. Yep. Yeah. Um. <laughs> To tell that to feminists yeah because uh male exactly. victims of domestic violence and feminist theory are basically they they asked for it therefore they're the primary aggressors even if they were they never threw a punch or ever hit they still asked for it because um they engaged in some form of abuse it's the only re explanation for why a woman would hit a man is if he's abusive somehow maybe yeah. maybe psychologically maybe in the etheric realm he was abusive the ethereal yeah. realm 
Yeah, he was he was she was he was hitting her with his thought thetans. You know, yeah. something like that. Okay. Yeah. All right, I want to thank uh Richard Beer for 100 bucks towards today this month's Ooh. fundraiser. Thank you, Richard. Yeah, woo! Thank you, Richard. And if you would like to help us out, like the various, very generous Richard, and also the very generous Meredith. Who Thank you. Come again. Out, please go to feedthebadger.com slash support to do so. And once more, if you want to send us a message, it's feedthebadger.com slash just the tip. I think this is a cool, cool um, subject, actually. Yeah, the AI because thing. I, yeah. As much as I say that it's a negative I, I, want, I wanted to leave this to, to maybe the end of the article, but I think it's also a huge positive, a huge boon. I would disagree with you, Brian, in some ways, but I'll get to it once we get to the end of the article. So let's, well, let's I mean, if it's going to result in women panicking and trying to, like, change things, then yeah, sure. Hey, um, no spoilers. All right, all right, all right, all right. I mean, I assume that because there's nowhere else you can go, but let me continue. Okay. Um, which is all very concerning. That is about abusing their virtual girlfriends. But I wonder if AI girlfriends really do become as pervasive as online porn, what this will mean for girls and young women who feel they need to compete with this. Most obvious to me is the ramping up of already unrealistic beauty standards. I know conservatives often get frustrated with feminists calling everything unattainable, and I agree that they go, can go too far, but still, as a woman, remember, conservative women are still women. So they're not going to necessarily go all the way against it. That's a very rare bird that would do that. Um, I agree they can go too far, but still, it's hard to deny that the pressure to look perfect today is unlike anything we've ever seen before. And I don't think that's necessarily pressure from men, but I do very much think it's pressure from a network of profit-driven industries that take what men like and mangle it into an impossible ideal. Yeah, but maybe you should just ask men what they like. Instead of looking at what the you know industries that are basically run by women and gay men <laughs> well instead of going to those people you know all right well anyway let me just let me just keep going um until the pressure isn't just to be pretty but filtered edited and surgically enhanced to perfection until the most lusted after women in our culture look like virtual avatars and until even the most beautiful among us start to be seen as average do you want to say anything to that um, uh, I mean, sure, but there's also equal pressure on men for that. And in yeah. fact, more because women well, are even because... stricter when it comes to, yeah, like women are like men will consider the average woman average attractive. Like, and the, the men aren't considered attractive until they're in the top 10% for women. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, yeah, I guess, but if you think this is unique to women, it's not, it's worse when it comes to. The situation is worse for men. I mean, that and really, it. Well, it's not. Men are not the only under the pressure to look great, though. It's not just that, right? There's pressure to like, you know, be, be able to like take a woman out to a night at the Ritz Carlton or something, like to spend yeah at least five hundred dollars on on the first date, you know. So it's and not. Be it's not incredibly only charming. The looks. What was that? So they have to have. They have to look like I don't know Chris Helmsworth, yeah. Not not the bad bod hit Chris Helmsworth. Or or they at have least have the make charm. all the women in her circle jealous. Okay, they have way. to have the charm of like a, a romantic lead, and then they have to have the money of a of a, a very very wealthy man, mm -hmm. and it's like well, that's a lot of pressure to put on men. And maybe mm -hmm. that's why some of them are turning to chatbots. It's not because of their standards, it's because of women's standards. Yep. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. Now, add to all that a world of fully customizable AI girlfriends, each with flawless avatar faces and a cartoonish body proportions. Eva AI's Dream Girl Builder, for example, allows users to personalize every feature of their virtual girlfriend from face tile to butt size which could clearly be unhealthy for men who already have warped expectations. But it's also unhealthy for a generation of girls already hating how they look, suffering from facial and body dysmorphia, and seeking cosmetic surgery in record numbers. Already many girls feel as if they are in constant competition with hypersexualized Instagram influencers and infinitely accessible porn stars. Now the next generation will grow up not just with all that, but knowing the boys they like can build... Wait... 
Now the next generation will grow up not just with all that, but knowing the boys they like can build and sex sexed their ideal woman and feeling as if they must constantly modify themselves to compete. I find that tragic. Okay, but so it affects women more. You again. find that tragic. You find that tragic, but the whole industry specifically apparently created and designed to the malign men to disparage men to, to express contempt for men as sexual and romantic partners for women that's not a problem like yeah i know that that evie that's not their focus right but think about it no you I... are being competed with by uh i guess ai girlfriends right so you now there's ai girlfriends on the market but think about the situation for men not only do they have to compete with romance novel heroes and all of the same kind of crap like the uh, the expectations but they have mm -hmm. to deal with the constant barrage of disparagement as sexual and romantic partners by an institution with billions of dollars of funding and all freedom academic freedom or sorry not academic freedom basically a the a a academia has rubber stamped feminist claims as legitimate like just mm -hmm. rubber stamped them so academia is basically standing before beside feminism and saying yeah they're right yep they're just as legitimate as physics guys yep, yep they're absolutely 100 percent right it's the men are oppressors that's that they're that's what they've always been all they want to do is turn you into a sex slave yep that's 100 percent right you can't it, it just trust the science you you can't question the science on this and when you look at all of the statistics they use to support this nonsense, it's all riddled with fraud and errors and oversights and not dealing with every pot, you know, like not looking at confounds, not looking at the um, falsifying their own conjectures. You know, it's all bullshit. And yet academia stands beside feminist campaigns to present men as terrible husbands and lovers. And men have to deal with that Plus, all of the pressure to be Mr. Big, mm -hmm. right? And you're complaining about virtual girlfriends? Okay, yeah, I, I and yes, I do have some sympathy for you because you guys, Evie, Evie probably do want a relationship with a man. However, becoming the reason why men are going to artificial girlfriends in the first place not a good look yeah. not a good strategy sort of self-defeating yep. okay all right uh so they have a screenshot here of all the options body type skinny fit chubby face styles hair colors which is you know interesting because i thought men's standards were like insane why is there all these options why is there all this customization if men only want like a perfect woman hmm weird uh but it isn't it isn't just unrealistic beauty standards that worry me. What's even more sinister is the unrealistic emotional standards set by these apps. Eva AI, for example, not only lets you choose the perfect face and body, but customize the perfect personality, offering opinions like or options like hot, funny, bold, shy, modest, considerate, and smart, strict, rational. Create a girlfriend who is judgment free, who lets you hang out with your buddies without drama. Who laughs at all of your jokes? Control it all the way you want to. Promises Eva AI. Design a girl who's always girlfriend is not on abusive. your side. Says replica. <laughs> what was that? I'm just. I'm like Evie. That's a bad thing. Okay, you you just really showed your ass there. Yeah, I know, right? This. What if I want to be okay, judgmental? I, what if I want to? I like, want to be judgmental, and I want to restrict my partner's ability to hang out with with their friends. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I mean, I, like, and I want shouldn't shouldn't I all of this be seen said. as a huh? I think men actually expect things from us, except our presence. Maybe we should be looking at these things that they kind of want out of women in their life. That's yeah, weird. maybe we should look at these things. Like seriously, how how disturbed is this? Uh, um, oh my god. Men can get AI chatbots that don't overtly abuse them. Like, <laughs> it's horrible. It's How can they ask so much of us? <laughs> they ask so much of us. How can we possibly be held to a standard of not being abusive? Like, yeah. good lord. Like, could you imagine an article in 
I don't know, Ernie magazine, and the guys are like, oh, oh my god, these these women, they want a AI man bots. And uh, uh, can you believe this? These AI man bots are 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 not judging them. And and they're and they're not, they're allowing their girlfriends to hang out with their friends without drama. And and uh, and they're laughing at their girlfriends jokes. That's just a Can you imagine the standards? Like mm -hmm. what? You have really shown your ass, Evie. Yeah. Like you got to read this and realize you are demonstrating why men are choosing a fucking text bot over the average woman. Mm -hmm. like, like, you're literally saying uh, a man wa not wanting to be with an abusive partner is too high a standard. Are you fucking kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me? Good yep. lord. I mean, does anybody else see this insanity? Yep. Uh, I got a super chow from Richard... Bier, he gives us $5 and says, just what is the difficulty level to just not be a harridan, cunt, raging harpy, or a feminist who sees a relationship as a dominance contest? No, you don't I, understand, I Richard. That, I think that pe women have forgotten that. I think that there's uh, like You don't a understand, weird... Richard. Yeah, go ahead. It's, it's too much to ask for women not to be abusive. Okay, mm -hmm. continue, Brian. Sorry. It's just too much. It's too much. I mean, technically, it's illegal for you to engage in coercive control and restrict your spouse from, you know, seeing their friends. Technically, that's illegal. Technically, that would get you in the abuser column at the Center for Disease Control. But, you know, Ellie says that's just too high a standard for women to be held to. <laughs> Lord. Yep. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> Oh my god, are you telling me that men can have a chat bot that don't it doesn't express continual desire standards. to murder them? Can men have standards we, at all? No, apparently not. Yeah, this is a this is another problem you guys aren't seeing. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, so then he says, How can we compete with that? Already women in relationships complain about porn addicted partners who aren't satisfied with actual intimacy. Now we're facing a Oh future wait, you missed something. Oh yeah. Design I... a girl who is always on your side. Oh, I read that Rick part replica. already, but yeah, maybe you didn't. Oh, you hear did. It. Okay, yeah, sorry. I did. I did. Design a girl who's always on your side. In quotes, says replica. What like, a horrible thing! Could you a woman imagine? Be on your side. No, but could you imagine, uh, a Ernie, like the the er the online magazine for men, Ernie, right? Mm -hmm. Can you believe these women? They want to have a virtual boyfriend that doesn't judge them. That allows them to hang out with their friends, laughs at their jokes, and is always on their side. Can you imagine the si the, the the sheer level of entitlement of those women? Are you? F Good lord! I don't actually. I really don't think that there's any any an incredible voice for men that would assert such a thing. That that yeah. would say women have too high standards if they want to be a, with a partner. Who doesn't judge them? I mean, aside from obvious things like you know judging them if they're abusive or murder their bunnies, but who doesn't judge them allows them to do you know do their do things that make them happy, laughs at their jokes, and is on their side. Like, do do you, do you could you imagine any legitimate voice for men who would judge women for wanting those things from men? No. I mean, yeah, I don't know. Well, let me see what they say about judgment free. What do they All mean right. by judgment? Oh, no, no. Ugh. I, it just goes to some sort of. <gasps> okay. All right. Next. All right. next um, yeah. I'll read some more of this. Yeah. So uh, let me see. Now we're facing a future where guys could get addicted to emotional validation elsewhere, sneaking away for some of that unparalleled devotion. Worse, what about young boys who grow up with this? Wh whose first sexual experience is chatting with AI women who never say no, never argue, never have original thoughts or an identity of their own, and then they try to date a real girl? Oh, I see. So it's going yep. to lead to grapes. Ah, Yes. This is course, how they're going to control this it. This isn't a problem because men are lonely and women like are conditioned to hate them and are easily propagandized 
into like seeing themselves as superior to men. This is a problem because these lonely men who only have AI to go to might become like dysfunctional in a dangerous way that harms women. Which can't be can't be taken care of. Like, and first of all, this is not how it works. Yeah, there's, there's like no solution. That's, I don't know what to do. This like just let them kill themselves, friends. Yeah, just yep. You know, no, no men shouldn't have AI. Like, I mean, yes, I said that there's a, there's a there's a potential pitfall, but it's better than nothing, right? Men shouldn't yeah. have AI, and men should just you know, men should get over the idea that they're completely undesirable to women, and women don't want them, but they can't manage that with ai no they should just kill themselves are you fucking kidding me <laughs> oh good lord and yeah. the other thing is that there's no indication that this is a pipeline to domestic abuse there's no indication that any form of media is a pipeline to domestic abuse what is a pipeline to domestic abuse is having been abused period and having developmental issues that you can see in a genetic test all right, so L, Evie, you don't like something. Appealing to the idea that it's going to de make men into demons is another reason why men are turning away from women, right? You know, like saying, oh, if you play another game of ball, another hour of Baldur's Gate, you're a demon who hates me. That's one reason why men are turning away from women, right? Yep. Because they are demonizing their media and demonizing their media consumption. Okay, let's keep going. All right, uh, let me see. Um, and there are already all these men on Reddit raving about how their AI girlfriends never argue, complain, or get bored of them, while real girls continually disappoint. Again, maybe women should step up. Um, yeah. Of course, I don't believe AI girlfriends are going to completely replace relationships. But I do think that, much like online porn, they will be there, always accessible, always a temptation, always a source of instant satisfaction. And I think it's likely that, for some, a real girlfriend just won't seem enough on their own, especially considering nearly half of Replica's users are already in a relationship or married. Well, maybe, oof, I mean, how do we know oof. that they're, they're doing it for some kind of, like, gratification? Or, what if they're in a loveless marriage? I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying it's okay, but I'm saying, like, can we just try to understand this? Instead of just, like, presuming the worst, like, you know, uh, well, possible, I don't Okay, know. well, here's the thing. They, uh, Evie apparently wants to reserve the right for women to be judgmental, to control men's activities, to um, demonize their hobbies, you know, and to basically control them, Right. Mm -hmm. Is that compatible with this idea that women want men as a companion? Because it sounds like the AI is offering the companion experience, and Evie says that women shouldn't have to compete with the AI because they're not offering the companion experience. They're offering the controlling, abusive partner experience. Like, seriously. Mm -hmm. You can't compete with AI... Because AI is supportive. Because AI isn't judging them. Because AI isn't forcing them to abandon their hobbies and friends. Because AI is not bored of them. Has an interest in what they have, to, what they want. Like, this is all what you get from a companion. Right? So what AI is offering men is the companion experience that women said they would give men... If they got men's role in society, that they would be like, well, if we can make our own money, then we can be companions. No, not, not really. Yeah, Didn't really not fall really out. how it shook like, out. That, not really how it shook out. But now AI is here saying, well, women sort of dropped the ball. We can offer you a companion experience, men. And here's the funny thing. It's like AI is offering what men want, what women said they would get if they gave up access to their jobs, to their identity as men, to what defined them as desirable in the past. So it's basically like a man who said to a woman, oh yeah, chop off your tits, I'll still find you attractive. And then no, actually I don't. That's what women did to men. They suckered them into this situation. They said, chop off your tits, I'll still find you attractive afterwards. And we find out that's not the case.
men chopped off their identity as providers, offered it to women, and said, here, you want this, you want meaning in your life, take it. I mean, how else did women get it since they have no power over anything? But men gave it to them. And then women said, well, we'll still find you. No, no, we actually, we don't find you desirable anymore. We don't really want you as companions. That's the only reason why AI has any ability to compete with women. And then the funny thing is, is that now women are turning around and getting upset that they're being outcompeted by something that's actually giving men what they said they would give men. And the funny thing is, is hey, Evie, you have no right to complain about this. Absolutely none. Because all these men want is a companion. That's it. Like, it's, it's, like, it's horrible. It's like some abusive friend complaining about their friend getting a companion bot that doesn't treat them like shit. Like, what the hell are you talking about, Evie? Mm-hmm. If you weren't, if you didn't feel like you were entitled to be judgmental towards men, to control their hobbies, to control their access to their friends, what else was there? Um, um, you know, to to not be on their side. Like, if you weren't want justifying being abusive, there'd be no market for this AI. Mm -hmm. Laugh at all your jokes. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's basically just like, oh yeah, AI is is you know they, you, these AI companies can actually simulate companionship for men. How can we compete with that as women? Well, uh, 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 be, uh, be men's companions instead of their judgmental, controlling overlords. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, good lord. Okay, let's keep going. All right. Uh, yeah, I gotta go soonish because I gotta pick Lindsay up from work. So, um, let let's see. Uh, I guess we're almost at the end. Blaze here. through it. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay. Um, but it also has isn't unreasonable to think that at least some men will entirely replace real intimacy with AI. After all, Gen Z is an especially anxious and socially awkward generation. Young people are having less sex than ever before and spend a lot of time watching online porn. The next generation, I think, which is Generation Alpha, I think it's safe to assume will be even worse. And even though we are right at the beginning of all this and the technology is still pretty clunky, men are already falling for their chatbots, proposing to them, and even feeling suicidal when they lose contact. What happens when AI becomes way more realistic, more powerful, and more mainstream? Well, that's a good question. Again, I think that well, at the I end guess... of the day, men would prefer real flesh and blood women if they're if they're nice to them. And, if they're you know, companions. <laughs> yeah, companions. So, um, just just keep going. Just all keep right. going. The only faint glimmer of optimism I can find in all this is that I think at some point life might become so stripped of reality and humanity that the pendulum will swing. Maybe the more automated, predictable interactions are pushed on us, the more actual conversations with awkward silences and bad eye contact will seem sexy. Maybe the more we are saturated with the same perfect pornified avatars, the more desirable natural faces and bodies will be. Because perfect people and perfect interactions are boring. We want flaws, friction, unpredictability, jokes that fall flat. I hold on to hope that someday we will get so sick of the artificial that our wildest fantasies will be something human again. But okay. first we're going... Yes, you mean for men, that men should want your friction and flaws and your awkwardness and your stupid jokes. Because are you going to extend that to men? Because that's why men are going to AI. This is, the, this is the elephant in the room. Men are going to AI not because of their standards, unless you're going to call them out for not wanting to be abused, which is sick. Evie, you're, 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 you're really showing your ass with that one. They're not going to AI for men's standards. They're going for women's because of women's. Because in mm -hmm. many cases, these men don't think they measure up. And they don't want to go through the pain of rejection for the very, very thin chance that they're going to find a woman who is going to like them as a companion despite their flaws. Like, this is the elephant in the room. What's driving this isn't men. It's women. Okay. Yep. 
Okay. Uh, where was I? Uh, maybe more, the more we are saturated with the same perfect pornified actors. Right. Unpredictability. Jokes that fall flat. I hold on to hope that someday we will get so sick of the artificial that our wildest fantasies will be something human again. But first, we're going there. It's happening. We are lurching forward. Full speed. The next generation of boys and young men won't just have access to online porn, but personalized chatbots, AI voice calls, VR headset experiences, deepfake technology, and whatever else is on the way. And my bet is the next generation of girls will battle anxiety and insecurity on a scale we've never witnessed before, with endless pressure to measure up physically, sexually, even emotionally, with whatever the market churns out for men. <sighs> but forget about that. We are jumping in, on, into our desires, igniting our fantasies. That's what these companies will call it as they intensify every female insecurity, monetize male loneliness, and commodify any last shred of human connection we should be sharing together. They will it. They will mine it all for profit, promising a fantasy, a dream, and paradise along the way. Our only hope is that most men will want something human enough to resist. Otherwise, I really don't think we can compete. Okay, well, no. no, you can't. You, writer you of this do, article... Honestly, you could. You just have to stop you, no, thinking no. you know what men want. Freya want. India, you can't compete. Your audience at Evie can't compete. If they internalize this crap that you're writing, they can't compete. But here's one thing, and this is this is where I get to rant, right? Okay, yeah, how much ahead. time do we have? How much time do we have before you have to leave? How much time, Brian? Can oh, I, I got like... Uh... Maybe 10 minutes? Yeah, go ahead. Alright, I'll try to keep my rant fairly quick then. <sighs> Deep breath. Alright. Right at the end of this, you are pretending like men are the primary driver of this. They are not. First of all, you should not be looking at that list of attributes that are related to AI not being overtly abusive to men. That is the minimum standard. Not like a maximum standard that's going to induce in insecurity in you. That is a minimum standard for you to strive for. To allow men to have their hobbies, their friends, and to not be judgmental, critical, nagging harpies. That is like a minimum standard. Okay? If you can't meet that minimum standard, I'm afraid a relationship is not for you. Second of all, why are men lonely? Do you honestly think men are lonely because... Oh, they just all decided to have too high standards for women? Like, just one day you're like, you know, I, I really would prefer crippling loneliness to, uh, to, uh, to holding out, you know, like, to the average woman, right? You know, maybe some guys have decided that, but only because the average woman apparently can't even be held to a standard of not being a criminal abuser. Like, seriously, Avi? You shouldn't be putting the standard for women as something below what she could be arrested for, you know, I mean, in a real, in a, in a legitimate world where domestic violence against men is considered a problem, right? You, that's not this. No, you, you don't put that standard that low. That is below minimum, right? Okay. Now, yeah, I could see men choosing crippling loneliness over an abusive relationship if Evie is going to put the standard of, of women below that of even not being abusive, right? But here's the other thing. Like, you're putting this all on men. It's men's fault. No, men didn't decide to be lonely. Women decided that for them when they decided the average man was not good enough for them. And now the average man has found an outlet with AI, with AI and they want a companion. Everything, everything you're describing here. You know what the you know what you're describing here? Freya? What you're describing here is an average woman, maybe a little bit more attractive than average, what they're choosing, what these men are choosing. An average woman with different kinds of personality that is on their side, so supportive, you know, likes their jokes. Okay, so shares their sense of humor, allows them to have their hobbies and friends, so isn't a controlling abuser, isn't judgmental, okay, so isn't an action, isn't like, again, a controlling abuser. So what they're describing is an average woman who treats them like they are their companion. Let's be, let's get it brown to brass tacks. 
That's what this is describing, Evie. That men want an average woman, maybe a little bit above average, maybe a little bit idealized, but who doesn't want that, right? Okay, an average woman with with personalities that are within within the realm of reasonable, like uh, hot. What was it? Hot, funny, bold, shy, modest, considerate, smart, strict, rational. I mean, they're a little bit stereotyped. The real, it sort of sort of sounds like a, you know, like um, it actually sounds like a, a Hell's Angel script. But whatever, you know, description of of a girl band. But whatever. So it's it's within the realm of reasonable, right? All of this is everything you're describing that men are trying to find with AI is within the realm of reasonable, within the realm of doable. For the average woman. I mean, they even have chubby as a body type option. Do you think they put that in if men aren't choosing it? Okay? So where do, do, do men want average women who are supportive or are in their side, laugh at their jokes, aren't judgmental, you know, let them have their hobbies. Average women who are companions. Oh my God, lock them up such dread misogyny are you freaking joking your article is exactly why men are going to ai and the funny thing is is again this isn't driven by men i'm pretty sure if a man could find an average woman who wants to be his companion who offers all of these things you know, even if they if they get in occasionally into arguments, even if they have disagreements, he would prefer that. He would prefer that. But that isn't available to him because the average woman doesn't want to be a man's companion. Doesn't want the average man at all. So that's where this is coming from. This is driven by your choices as women. And here's the way that you solve it. You don't have to sit there, like, in this entire article, reads like this is just happening to women. Like, it's just, well, hopefully, I don't know, the way things shake out, some innate passive quality of ours will overcome the AI, or maybe men will just save us from ourselves. Just so passive. Here's how you compete. It's right what I was saying in the beginning. And incidentally, this is what makes this great. Okay, I'm going to get into what makes this great, and then I'm going to explain how women can compete. What makes this great? What makes this scary is that, you know, if we have centralized girlfriend bot, that the feminists will get it, get in there like a dirty shirt and start trying to control it. That was what make it, makes it scary. What makes it great is that now women are going to have to compete against something. And that's something they need. They desperately need. And they're going to have to start looking at what they're competing against and not saying, oh, men are wrong for wanting it, but asking them, why is it they're being outcompeted by a text interface, by a spreadsheet? Okay, let's let's bring it down to brass tacks. Why are you being outcompeted by some freaking uncanny valley AI art and a spreadsheet, ladies? Why? Okay, because you shouldn't be. 100% you shouldn't be. Well, one is you no longer want the average man as a companion, or if you ever wanted the average man as a companion. Apparently that was just a lie. That was just a lie you made up in the 1950s and 60s just to get men to, to chop off their own identity and give parts of it to you, right? But anyway, you don't really want the average man. What's the average man going to do? He's going to find companionship elsewhere. Well, if you want to successfully compete with that, which I don't get it. Like you, you, you constantly talk about how you don't want the average man, but now apparently you want him as soon as he's looking at something else. Well, if you want to compete with that, what do you do? Stop condemning men for what they want. Start understanding it. Start understanding it. Start internalizing it. Because what I hear is that a man may indeed want a woman who either supports him or maybe even fights for him. You know, you could do that. Actually, AI can't simulate that. I don't think it ever will. Believe me, AI will never simulate female men's rights activists. I guarantee it. Feminists wouldn't allow it. The, uh, the creators wouldn't create it. So here's one way you can distinguish yourself from AI. Get off your fat duff. Metaphorically fat, I mean. 
and fight for men. Tell them that you care about them. Tell them that you want them in your life. Tell them that you are fine with an average guy. Right? Tell them that you like their sense of humor. Tell them that the feminists are full of shit about how men are a bad choice as husbands and lovers. Fight against this goddamn narrative that is constantly pumped out, that's contemptuous and dismissive of men as partners. Fight back against it. Get out there and start using your voice to help men. That's how you can distinguish yourself from AI. Because I guarantee AI will never do that. The feminists and their constructors will never let it happen. They'll never let it happen, for one. Okay? Anyway, and there, there you go. That's how you distinguish yourself. Be men's companions. Be men's advocates. Fight for them. Care about them. Support them. Deny all the bullshit that's being said about them. Distinguish yourself. Get off your ass. Become a better person. Clean your room! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had to do that. <laughs> All right. I got okay. a super chow. Uh, and we, we also want to really quickly... Can, do we have enough time to really quickly cover that one thing I was talking about? Oh, right, right. Let me, yeah, let me just read the super chow first. I got to go in like four minutes. So I'll read the super chow and then we'll do it. Um, there's two of them actually. So they are from, uh, anonymous. I don't know why she's jumping like that. Um, and let me just make sure. Oh no, though. There was another Richard, uh, great indoors gave us one too. So I'll read that also. I'm trying some different things with the chat and it's not working out the way I want. So I might change it back. I wanted it scrolling across the bottom, but the problem is, is that once something vanishes, I can't like feature it. So uh, Great Indoors gives us 10 bucks and says, maybe if women would define... Oh, I got a bunch more now. Uh, maybe if women would define the quality of their relationships to be more than the health of their sex life and thus basically offer more than just their body, then maybe the AI Stepford waifus would seem less of a threat to them. That, I mean, yeah, are women really are... Men, men, see, the thing is, men don't actually think that about women, but the kind of, like, you know, dark triad men at the top do... And so women, because they don't really listen to other men, they presume that what the dark triad men are want is what all men want. That's why they're always complaining about guys that, like, you think, well, these guys don't exist. Well, they do, but they're a tiny percentage of men. So, yeah, I I, th I think that uh, Evie has a blind spot. They The people here, they don't, they're just like other women. They only see the top men. And they're like, well, these top men are kind of badly behaved. And the bottom men are all creepy. And when I say the bottom, I mean the rest. <laughs> like the 99% yeah, like of other men, right? <laughs> um, Zapier gives us, or this is Zapier. This is Anonymous gives us five bucks and says, it's almost as if AI girlfriends have more compassion for men than actual women. And then he gives another $5 and says, there was a Twitch streamer called Bad Bunny who complained to her audience for low donations and low subscriptions. All she was doing was sitting on her gamer chair, doing fuck all but existing, and she had the audacity to call her audience cheap asses. Yeah, but they did they give her money? Because if they did, then she's justified. I mean, I don't agree with it, but the thing is, you know, it's it it's men have to stop simping for these women. Yeah. Um, Derek. Well, but if it works, maybe I should start calling you guys cheap asses. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Yeah, no, it's okay. And then Zaranx gives us 10 bucks and says, if women or the author were the least bit curious, they'd understand that the customization options they might have to compete with is inherent in the fact these men have the option to create their ideal mate. Weird Science had movie and television iterations. Le Kelly LeBrock for the movie and Vanessa Angel for television. If every man had the Weird Science tools available and he had to go that route, each man would likely have something different. Though there be many duplicates, mine would be a mix of Milia, Mila Jovovich, Michelle Rodriguez, and Ava Mendez, with various aspects of the personalities I attribute to them. That's a far cry from the pale-skinned, dark-haired woman I'm generally attracted to and uh, have only seen a handful of in my life that were natural and not derived by makeup. 
Ultimately, it's character that matters and not the looks. All right, thank you, Xerinx. And yeah. for that... Okay. Um, let's really quickly go through the, the final thing. So there was yeah, something let's... I wanted to show you guys, because I think it's really critical. Uh, I don't know if you all remember the... The study that showed that men leave their sick wives more than women leave their sick husbands. Uh, mm -hmm. I spoke about it in the past. I think I had a Twitter argument about it. And I mentioned the fact that the study found that the relationships that found that women or men were... were first of all, it did not find that men were leaving because it didn't say who was leaving whom. So it didn't indicate who was leaving whom. Also, for whatever reason... The relationships that the sick women were in were considerably shorter than the relationships the sick men were in. So there was that that was another confound. So it might have just been a situation where shorter relationships tend to end more are more likely to end than longer relationships. Mm -hmm. But now we find out. Like you could pull up the Twitter thread. I have there. it pulled up. Yeah. Now now we find out. That that study was complete bullshit to begin with, from stem to stern. Okay? And what's astounding about this, so they, they, they actually didn't find a significant difference in, men, in the breakup of relationships if the man got sick or the woman got sick. But this has been going the rounds. I've seen feminists, multiple feminists, uh, reference it in order to describe how men, again, men are a terrible choice when it comes to being a partner, being a husband, being a lover, right? They've been referencing this over and over and over again to just throw it in men's face about how awful they are. Now we find out the study was total and utter crap, right? But the damage is done. Now more people think that this is true and that men are a bad choice. But it just, it just strikes me that while Ellie is writing an article about this, about how men are turning to AI girlfriends, at, meanwhile... We have academic institutions that devote themselves to creating bad science that proves that men are poor choices as partners. Think about that. We have an entire academic institution devoting itself to this in various incarnations. Men are, 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 are violent abusers. Men are oppressors. Men are rapists. Men leave their sick wives. Women are miserable in, in marriages. Women are turned into domestic slaves in marriages. All of this stuff. Think about all this corpus of, of, of stink that has been constructed by these well-supported, well-influential and moneyed institutions around men as partners. Okay? And Evie is looking at these men going to AI for partnership. Maybe another big reason is because they've been told they're not wanted. How many times have men heard that they're a terrible choice for men for women? Hell, maybe these men are going to AI because they don't want to make a woman miserable because that's what that's the only thing they've been told their whole life that they will do if they ever get in a relationship with one is to make her miserable. And what kind of unfairness is that? Yep. Like it's not even it's not even holding men to a it's not even the same as holding women to the standard of apparently being a companion and not being abusive. She like that you would think that everything that Evie is calling out that women that men apparently want would just be a minimum standard for a companion, like a romantic companion, but apparently it's just too much for Evie. But it's not even being held to that standard. It's being actively disparaged. Like it's not even that we hold men to a high standard of looks and wealth and care and like um, being entertaining, being socially entertaining, which we do. It's not even that. It's that we go actively out of our way to paint the average man as some kind of selfish monstrosity. Like, uh, like the, the, getting in a relationship with the average man is like having a rash of boils on your ass for a woman. That's not, it's not even like holding men, the, women to a standard of a basic standard of companionship. It's literally attempting to destroy the desirability of men as companions entirely. I mean, it's just, it just blows my mind. It just, just blows my freaking mind. She had that gift with the guy with his mind being blown. That, that's me right now. Blown. Mind blown. All right. All right. Okay. I got it. We got to wrap it up. I got to go.
Um, yes. So, like, let's let's do the last things. Uh, I'm sorry it's so abrupt, but I'm like gonna be yeah, I know. Lindsay up. She's gonna be mad at me. I know it. So, um. Uh oh. Better get an AI wife. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Feedthebadger.com slash support to support the show. I don't know. What did you say? No, Sorry. I'm just joking. I, I jokingly said, don't tempt me, Allison. That's all. I was joking. <laughs> Feedthebadger.com slash support to support the show. And feedthebadger.com slash just the tip to send us a message. Just tell us you're not screaming into the void. Sometimes it feels like that. You know, that you appreciate our content and what we have to talk about and the way that we talk about it. Because I think we actually approach this in a very unique way. I often do not hear people talking about this in the way that we do. So feedthebadger.com slash support to make sure we can keep doing this. Feedthebadger.com slash just the tip to send us a message and a thank you. And also feedthebadger.com slash subscribe because we, uh, it's great to have people come back and help us out each month. All right. Those are the options to make sure we can keep doing this. And back to you, Brian. All right. Well, if you guys like this video, please hit like, subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Hit the bell for notifications. Uh, let us know what you guys think about what we talked about on the show today. You can find links to uh, the article in the description. And please, please, please share this video because sharing is caring. Thanks, guys, for joining us on today's episode of the Red Pill Dating thing. And we'll talk to you guys in the next video. <laughs> Men's right activists are machines, dude. Okay? They are literal machines. They are talking point machines. They are impossible to fucking deal with. Especially if you have like, especially if you have like a, a couple dudes who have good memory on top of that too. Holy shit. You're fucked.